everybody, it's Mike with Seeds and Arrows Frontier, and I'm here down in Florida. Woo! It's hot. But uh, here we're in down in Florida with my brother, Ben. Hey everybody, how's it going? So we are back here. Uh, last year we did a uh, video uh, for uh, the Russians versus Italians, and uh, he had those both uh, starting out bought queens and uh, five frame uh, nukes. Well, actually, you got somebody saying hi. Huh? Look at that. He's like already smelling you. Mm -hmm. Or she is. So, uh, we had uh, two hives that he got. One first originally was the Russians. Somebody told him that Russians don't do very well in heat. And then uh, from there, he got an Italian bought an Italian queen split off a uh, couple of the Russian colony that he got the package with and they started both drawing out their own combs um, now uh, just an update on these we're gonna get into them today and uh, they've come a long way since the, he had them both in uh, nuke boxes but uh, now he's actually made a couple of splits off of uh, both of those hives Unfortunately, we did have a tragedy with the Russian queen. So, uh, but we'll go through that here in a second. Uh, and we'll explain a little bit of that. We're, uh, we're new beekeepers, but uh, uh, this is uh, both of his hives right now. As you can tell, they're doing both very well. So both of the colonies swarmed this spring. He wasn't able to get the original queens um, as they swarmed out. He caught the uh, one of the swarms, which he believes was the uh, the Russian. Was it the Russian hive swarm? Oh, we weren't able to catch the Russian swarm, so they swarmed out. But they had a couple of queen cells in there, and then we had the Italian hive uh, also swarm out. He caught them, but however, uh, when he caught them, he put them in a tote, and then the next morning he came outside, they were a little bit in the heat, and they basically baked in the tote. So uh, fortunately for him, he had one of the queen cells hatch out. She came back and got mated, and so uh, we had that one, and then he did a split off of that um, for the Russian hive as well. Uh, all the queen cells basically uh, seemed to be uh, stung by one queen. She flew out and then never came back. So what he ended up having to do is take a, uh, an Italian queen. So he actually made a couple of splits and then took one of the Italian queens that he made a split off of. She got made it came back and then we replaced the Russian hive with an Italian queen. So they're both technically Italians now. So, um, but they both did make it through the winter. And um, at that point in time, uh, they were both doing very well. Now something interesting that we came across for the hives was that uh, it seemed like the Russian hive, now correct me if I'm wrong, Ben, well, maybe I'll have you explain that, like the uh, differences in the two. Yeah, we'll do that. So, so we're getting geared up to come in here, but now he's got uh, two more uh, mated queens that he ordered, Italians, and uh, they're in nukes right now. But we're going to get in here to see if uh, the yellow stripe one, to see if it uh, needs a bigger box. Yep. So we're going to see if this one needs a bigger box. We got a 10 frame with some foundation frames and uh, in case we need to move them over. But uh, all of them look like they're doing pretty good. So this wire that he has up now, he, actually, he also had a uh, little bit of a loss because during the, uh, Mr. Bear came to say hi. the winter season or the, I guess is cold as what you get down here in Florida. He had a bear come through and actually knocked both of the hives off and actually gorged himself on some of the uh, honeycomb. So he lost some of the frames of honey with the comb. 
So they still got sugar water up here. Yeah. This one's empty. That one's empty. I don't know why. So this hive, they seem to take it slower. Both times that I've filled them up now, this one goes faster than that one. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Let's see those two. I need to add some soup. So, currently, we have going on. This was the the wooden box. The wooden uh, colored one was the original Russian hive. The mostly white one, referring to the two bigger hives. The mostly white one was my original Italian hive. Um, so at the beginning of springtime, both of my queens, they all made it, both my hives made it through the winter time. Then um, springtime came, I put the supers on thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to make some honey. Um, I did something stupid, apparently I found out that you're not supposed to put a bunch of frames of undrawn comb over top of a queen excluder because you can induce a swarm. Well, I kind of did that and all of a sudden both my hives start making queen cells like crazy, um, capping them. Um, so I was like, okay, they're going to swarm. So I started looking for the queens. I couldn't find the queens. I looked and looked um, prior to any of the queen cells hatching. Ultimately, as luck would have it, one day I'm at work and my wife calls and says, hey, the bees are swarming. <laughs> so wasn't much I could do about it, but we did find the swarm. It was just too high up for me to get to it with my... Uh, lack of preparation at the time and that one got away the second swarm happened two days later not sure which swarm was from which hive first because they both still had a bunch of bees um, but I did catch the second one and like my brother said I was kind of goofy it, the weather was getting down to 50s at night and so I didn't really think the heat would be a problem I did have ventilation holes in the tote bucket but apparently not enough um, and the early morning sun i mean i came out by like 9 30 in the early morning sun it was already 70 degrees hmm. and they were pretty much toast so that was very depressing um so then i had two queenless hives at the time so i waited a while to see if either of them would oh geez what was that i don't know like a dragonfly or something like that knocked the camera yeah. <laughs> So I waited um, for a while, for both a few weeks, for both a couple weeks, for both of them to see if they would, because they both had queen cells, to see if they would bring back their own queen. Um, neither of them, from what I could tell, did. Now, prior to the swarms, like uh, Mike said, I had taken from the Italian hive uh, a frame that had like four different queen capped queen cells on it, and I did a split with that with another frame of, of uh, bees, um, and so that queen actually hatched and returned and uh, so she was laying eggs so I had a small nuke with a right queen or that was queen right and then two big hives without a queen so the old Russian hive or the original Russian hive of the two the two big hives was the weaker of the two uh, population wise their bee count was going down it seemed faster every time I would check them um, for eggs there was just it just seemed less and less bees and so my idea at the time was to go ahead and just merge the existing queen I had while I was waiting on two new queens to get here. Um, so I went ahead and took the existing queen, <coughs> sorry, smoke, that I had and put her in the Russian hive just to keep the hive alive. Um, and she did, they, they all took to her and everything was good. Um, and she's doing, that's, that's the current queen that's in here right now. She's from a split that I made. Um, and then while I was waiting on my two new queens to get here, the original Italian hive actually returned a queen. Um, so I was actually going to take a frame of eggs from the, the new Italian and the old Russian hive, put that into the original white hive, which is the Italian hive, uh, just to keep them happy so they didn't go into a worker, a laying worker situation. And the day that I was going to do that, I pull a frame out and it's full front to back capped brood. Um, then I checked three or four more frames, same thing. So they already had a queen in there for a while. I just didn't know it. Um, so they were slamming, doing really good. Um, so then I got my two new queens and started the two nukes that you see. Um, one of them flew the coop. So I decided I had, a, I had a bunch of drone brood and everything going on. So I just was like, well, let me try a split. So the current white and yellow nuke is a split queen that I made. The other white nuke over here, the solid white nuke, is the one that I got from a company up in Georgia. So that's currently the four queens and hives that I have going right now. So, the, so the, the queen that you made over here is actually doing better 
well, than the queen that you got is, from Georgia. She is in a sense, but I did add, so I started both of them with three comb, three frames of comb and some brood and stuff like that to get them a head start. Yeah. This one, because they had, she had less bees and she was a brand new queen. I went ahead and gave her a full frame of brood. Oh, okay. So okay. she has four, four honeycomb frames to play with. Whereas they still only had the three that I gave them originally. Yeah. So today, depending on how they're doing, I may look at going ahead and pulling a frame of brood yeah. from one of the big hives and putting it over there. Putting it over there. All right. So that's where we're at. So today the plan is we're going to check the yellow and white one, see if they're big enough to go. I have a feeling they're probably going to be ready to go into a bigger hive. Um, so we got a full little, these are both eight frames. The two big highs I have right now are eight frame boxes. So the new the new one I got is a ten frame box. That'd be my first ten frame hive. Um, so we're gonna if they're ready, we're gonna put them in there. Uh, the white one I have a feeling they're probably still not gonna be ready yet because I wanted them to get yeah. at least four, be working on their fifth frame of honeycomb before I start you know give them more to work on. Yeah. Um, so I wanted them to have the bee coverage for that. So we're gonna take a look, see what's going on. All right. bees up there trying to get the sugar water, but there ain't none left. Uh, are those just like ice cream containers or? No, it's, well, it came them. It's oh, a bee feeder? Oh, okay. Nice. That top, the whole top has like little tiny microscopic holes yeah, in it. Yeah, That they um, like to just do. So they can, it's that whole area up there that they can feed right. in. Um, I have to shake the bees off of this. Yeah. There's usually a lot, just to warn you. Okay. There's not that many. So ho hopefully that's encouraging them just to bring it right down and draw a comb. Well, that was the idea. So these were all empty frames before, right? Yeah. At one point? Like when did you put these empty frames in here? Well, these are the ones that started with the beginning of the seat. Holy cow. What? Check that out, look through. They've almost got all of them filled out. Oh, nice, Ben. Dude. That's, oh, that is. That's way more than a week and a half ago. Wow. They had three of them filled oh, out a week oh, and a half oh, ago. Oh, nice. Look at that. We finally did it. Woo! Good yeah. job, girls. Man. Is that foundation? There is a little bit there of foundation. There is foundation. Yeah, yeah. They're right, foundation so, yeah. frames. Let's, this is for Let's honey. pull these off and see what they look like. Yeah, they probably are filling it as they go, too. Yeah, I mean, it's sugar it's water. It's sugar water, but... Yeah. But I just... The comb, you can just extract that out and then just be ready to use them. Like that's, September. That was my goal, was to be ready for the fall flow. Yeah. So, this is definitely the right way to be going, or the right... Method? Heading in the right direction. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, that's like already ready. Looks darker than. I'm sure there's some honey that's mixed in with it. That's but yeah. awesome, though. I mean, they almost have the whole thing filled out, both sides. Yep. Yep. Nice. I see if any They're working it, man. Yet. They're working it. That's like, it looks like every frame. The outside of the far right one is not done yet, but I can always flip that around. Yeah, I, that's what I would do, actually. This one's really fat. So suggest a word of what I would suggest doing is actually. Man, it's awesome. Um, don't let them cap that, and just spin out the the nectar. Well, they already capped some right there. Oh uh, yeah, they're already capping some. That's all fine. <laughs> this one little cell right there in the middle. Yeah. There's like a bee all the way in there. That's beautiful, man. Actually, I think it's dead. Pollen? No. Oh. <laughs> I think the bee, bee? Died. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's moving. Oh. It's all the way inside the hole. Drunk on honey. <laughs> That's oh, the zero. That is awesome. Yep, this whole next frame. Man. I would, so hey, exciting. you know what I would do, though? What? Oh, Wait, uh, which, you, this super over here, I'd probably get another, buy some more uh, super frames. Yep. That's not a bad idea. Go ahead start start getting them started on the next. As many as I can, because you can do a double D or double super. 
you do suit four or five supers there's right. one guy that pulled i saw one youtube video i forget the name of the channel but uh, he pulled seven supers off of one hive yeah that's awesome but yeah that's definitely like, hey what are you doing with our honey definitely like 60 60 pounds of uh or frames that can hold about 60 pounds of honey right there Take this one and just put it in the middle. Now let me see that that outside frame. See how much they did. They actually, so are they're drawing it, it out. Drawing I mean, it. So these were ones. Coverage. Remember the cheese grade method? Yeah. This is what I did on these. Okay. So, so that does work. That's, that's what that's what they started with. That's a great idea to do it that way versus having to so melt it down, wax every, it. Every actually I did it. The there was three on here originally that I did the hard way where I melted the wax. Painted do it you, on do and you everything. you have those? Do you have those? I, have, I don't have them marked, but it was like three in the middle originally. Okay. But none of the, all the, there was like three like this where it was just foundation and I just, I was like, I didn't feel like melting down the wax yeah, again. I'd, I'd put that and right I just in the did a cheese grater on it. But I mean, they've, they have comb on all eight frames. So. Sweet. That's. You're that's, ready, you're ready to put another box on there, buddy. That's great. And probably, hey. This one over here is probably the same way, I'd bet. The outside? This one over here that's sucked down a, a majority of the uh, sugar water? Yeah, I'm going to wait. I just hate messing with this when <laughs> when it's still full because then you have to like try to keep it right side up and all that. It's a pain. I got you. Uh, I mean, so eventually I was, I'll check it just to... Well, I was hoping to see like the, uh, the Italians versus Italians, but Italians I guess we'll wait. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I mean, we still, can we can pull it off. I don't care. That's still beautiful. I want to do the alcohol wash first, though. Oh yeah. So there. So this is the outside. Yeah. I mean, but that's working it. And then the other side, the inside of the outside frame. I mean, it's pretty much. They got comb going all the way across. It's beautiful. Yeah. So um, I might actually show. Well, no, I can't do that because I lost my phone in the river. But. uh we had foundationless honeycomb that I was thinking would be the best way to go and uh, put it in the extractor and it crushed all the comb. So it did exactly what I did not want it to do. That's so now I'm definitely switching to foundation. Yeah, that's why this one has some foundationless because I had some people that were like, oh, I want honeycomb. Yeah. So I just did a couple. And so it, what it, it I'm is gonna good. Do, yeah. Those, the plan is to just go ahead and cut it out. Right. I'm not going to try and extract it in an extractor just because of that. I right. don't want it to blow out. Right. And that's good. So you got the, the outside frames already done. And that's what they want to work on. They'll work on the, the middle frames because they want the middle frames to. They want the middle frames to be good and then they work their way out so now you already uh is it already burnt <laughs> Let's see what they're doing on the outside here if we're gonna open up the, the bottom of it i want to make sure we got smoke <laughs> yeah There's the one that we just uh, marked the queen and put her in a new box. Doing good. Doing a little bit of window washing there. They are bearding more than the other ones, though. And they suck down more of the sugar water. This is the original Russian hive. Yeah, and, and the Russian queen, the, Russian, the old Russian hive queen, is, that's just a split that I made from the original Italian queen. Sugar water. All right, back into them. Are they full on honey frame? 
All right, so I got a full frame of brood right here. Nice. So I'll let the bees get back on it for a little bit, and then I'll shake that into there. Into there. Uh, yeah, I'll pull that over when you pull it out. Well, I can. A little easier to work with. Then I can just dump them back. Yeah. All right, so here goes the brood. Just watch rolling the queen. Uh, I guess we just got an egg. <laughs> Probably. Yeah, look at that brood pattern too. So I'm gonna make sure the queen is not on here first. So yeah, do you wanna eggs. find do you wanna find the queen first to make sure? I don't know. This, well we have to go through all the boxes. But... The, all the capped brood. I was hoping to have most of the capped brood. Oh, that's, yeah, there's a lot of uncapped. So she Never might mind. be on here. Yeah, there's one day old eggs. She should have a, I think a green mark. Nurse bees would on eggs too, right? but I don't want to shake eggs, right? Yeah, you general, generally you want to find like the majority cat brood. Yeah. This whole thing next to its honey. I have to go down and under the second deep. Going downstairs. Is this one? Let's see. Oh wait, yeah, here's some cat brood in this one. That's some more cat brood. Very nice though. Look at that pattern though, man. That is fantastic. The whole frame. And queen. They're about ready to like bust out. I'm looking. seeing her there my fear though is that you know she could be on like the sidewall or something like that if you don't find her well I'll look in the scoop too before I actually wash them and they got a bunch of brand new eggs so yeah <laughs> no, I'm well and that and that absolutely I mean, because there's always accidents. It can, it can be near impossible to find a queen. Yeah, and, and there's always accidents that happen. So that's why if you're planning on actually doing raising bees, to have like a couple of nukes that you could just go ahead, pull the uh, queen out from one of those nukes, and then start an emergency queen cell um, for the nuke. But then your uh, your honey production hives don't skip a beat. They'll go right back to town with the new queen. Alrighty. I do not see her. Is there? Mm -mm. It's funny, they got like two holes right through the middle. Yeah, I see that. Nice piece of foundationless though. Yeah. See the wires where... Was that? I was going to say, was there wires? Oh, we didn't cover the bear attack. Yeah. So it's September oh, of... Oh, no, it's a drone. Okay. So September of last year, I had... So we had the... This is post first uh, Russian versus Italians video. We did that video in July. By September I had both of these hives in double deep boxes and I had checked them on a Friday night before I went back to work and both of them had almost completely filled out every frame of the deep that they had available. Um, I came home at like 3 o'clock in the morning and noticed that the Russian hive was on the ground and uh, there was bees everywhere, frames were out, and I realized that it was a bear attack. I came out 3 o'clock in the morning, got stung a couple times, <laughs> trying to put it all, I just wanted to put get it back it off, together. Well, I didn't put it back together, I just wanted to get it off the ground. Yeah. Uh, so I got it back up on the rails, and was successful doing that, 
but because it's nighttime and they can't really see what the heck they're doing, they're just stinging whatever they could. They stung me through my pants a couple times, which has never happened. And I'm wearing shorts right now. Yeah. <laughs> and they're, I'm not getting stung. So I figured they were just, you know, as soon as they hit something, they were just trying to sting. So yeah. Anyway, they're just um, feisty. Put, got them off the ground. About four o'clock in the morning, I hear another thud outside. Come out and I see the bear, and it knocked the now the only hive I had left was the Italian hive. Knocked that one off the ground, or knocked it off the rails as well. Was eating the frames, and I scared it off. So that's why the electric fence is around this thing now. Um, since then, I've had a. Uh, and this is like a horse fence, so it's pretty powerful. Um, since then, haven't had any issues. Now, now you actually did. I have a trail camera just to see if I if, if a bear even sniffs around here. So he actually put some bacon on the wires just in yeah. case the bear came back. He'd bite into the bacon. Right. And the bacon's still here, so <laughs> I would say it's. All right. So let's shake this out real quick. We're but gonna yeah. shake it. So both of my queens actually survived, and then they both survived through the winter. But now, what what would you say would be the difference? So the Russians versus Italian video to close that out. What was the difference? Because the Russians seem to okay have a noticeable. So disclaimer, I only had one Russian queen and one Italian queen. So this is not like a, a, a say all for every you know, end all be all of this one's better or this one's better. Um, both highs were very productive. The Russians actually temperament wise were a little bit, a little less temperamental than the Italians, at least for these two queens. Um, every time I went into them, um, as the, you know, as the population increased in both the hives, uh, but the Italians, the reason why that in the springtime when I, while I went ahead and did the split with the Italian queen cells was because the Italians seem to be producing comb a lot more than the Russians. Right. Um, or at least at a faster rate. So the Russians started off with more. The Italians actually ended up catching up and a, and a little bit surpassed them prior to the bear attack, of course. All right. Ultimately, yeah, I decided to go with the Italians because they seem to be producing comb a little bit faster in this climate. Which is what I was told, you know, that the Italians would do better. Um, but, you know, wanted to try my own thing. The Russians were, were okay. Um, I didn't do Varroa mite checks last year. I did treatments, but I didn't do checks. So I couldn't tell you, like, one was better at the hygienic part of it than, you know, from what I've heard, Russians can be more hygienic with Varroa mites. But I didn't actually confirm, you know, that. Um, this is Ben and Mike. Ben and Mike, the Seeds and Arrows Frontier. Make sure you like and subscribe. There you and, go. And uh, as always, stay safe. God bless. Make each day count. And I think I did it out of order. <laughs> no, that's fine. What was the right order? Is that it? You Thanks for watching. Stay safe. Make each day count. And God bless. And God bless. Be safe, everybody. <laughs>